Mr. Jay Tingle in the house actually has a surprise for us. Jay Tingle's in the house. Okay, I got you something. Okay, what did you get me? You got me a box? Yeah, because the other box is too heavy. This is actually pretty exciting, to be totally honest with you. Ready? I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. Wow, it looks so good. It's super tame, huh? Super tame. He's actually my best friend. Oh, my God. Take a look at that, man. Of course, that is a white throat monitor. We have black throat monitor, and that is flapjack. This is what? Grits. Grits. So we have flat, <laughs> flapjack, and now we have grits. That is amazing. Now the white throat monitors are similar to black throats. They're both African animal, but the difference is, is that these guys actually stay much smaller. This is about as big as it's gonna get. Yeah, it, it really won't get old. Yeah, it won't get much bigger than this. And they call these actually rock monitors over in Africa, but uh, absolutely wonderful. Oftentimes very tame, just like the black throat monitor. Now uh, we have to do some work, right, Bruce? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is really I did cool. amazing work taming this animal down. No, you did, yeah, I did so good. That's awesome. So uh, another animal ambassador, meat grits. Hold it. I don't think I've ever seen you hold a lizard actually ever. Wow. Here, let me look your face. No. Okay. Do you want to know what his name is? No. Grits. No. Flapjack and Grits. No. Black throw monitor? No. White throw well, monitor. I know. It was already a bad name, and now this is going to be another terrible name. Grits? Yeah. Oh, look at him. That's cool, though, right? That is a cool monitor lizard, isn't it? Wow. How old is he? Two. Really? He actually just turned two on February 13th. Isn't that big for two? No. I think she likes it. She's Grits. She's too. smiling. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope to start your day is absolutely incredible. You can go over to reptilearmy.com, join the movement. You can get on your horse and become one of our soldiers. We really do appreciate your support. The money goes to education, and we're supporting the hobby, so go to reptilearmy.com. Super excited about the Reptarium expansion, as you guys know, and I've been talking about the fact that we met with the architects a few weeks back. Well, I just got word that the architects are gonna bring me the first renditions. I think there's two or three actual iterations of what it could potentially look like, and that's five days from now. So five days from now, we get a chance to look. Now listen, you know, I have it kind of built in my head all over, but the thing that's great about architects is a lot of times they'll bring like some visions that you didn't even think about. So it's not just about what's going on inside, but the facade of outside. Like I mentioned, the entire top is going to be windows so that when you look from the road it's just all windows up into the aquarium side of things and then who knows what the architects are going to do to make that look absolutely amazing so I am so excited it's a bummer that it's going to be five days from now but I'm going to share the time when they bring it to you you guys can see it and maybe you can tell me what you think so hey tell you what guys we're moving forward one step closer to the expansion I could not be more excited you know that time of day where I have to check the animals that I fed we're still feeding all the ball pythons a lot this time of the year. You know, the ones that aren't actually breeding are still getting fed. The ones that laid are now getting fed. And the ones that are growing follicles that need that extra food are getting fed. So I have to check all the ball python. So let's go ahead, roll a time lapse. Okay, checked all the animals. Uh, feeding went really well. Definitely have a bunch of animals that I ultrasound that are even more advanced on follicles. So we're about to wrap up. I mean, we have maybe two weeks left of breeding and we're pretty much kaput here. It's looking like, again, maybe right in that 155 to 160 clutches range. We already have about 65 clutches down, 70 clutches down. So we're about halfway there. So uh, things are continuing to go good. Super busy day here at the Reptarium Ageland. And of course, Jay over here are gonna be working their butts off along with me. We actually have a birthday party showing up right now. So we have birthday parties, we have tours, we have zoo to use, we have open to the public tonight. It's gonna to be an absolute banger. Uh, I always love this. It's great to see the world is opening up again and seeing people's smiling faces is absolutely incredible. We're gonna go ahead and start the presentation if you wanna come up here. We'll have you guys take a seat on the right tape for me.
One of the things I love about reptiles is the history of reptiles, and certainly because I've been doing it so long, I have a lot of knowledge of the history of reptiles, and I think I'm gonna share with you every now and then some of that history, and today I'm gonna to talk about piebald ball pythons. You know, pies are an amazing animal. They're one of the most incredible mutations on the planet when it comes to just like wowing. People that don't know anything about reptiles see a pie and they're blown away, and that's what makes them so special. Well, it turns out that back in the 80s, there was one animal that was imported, a guy named Brian Sharp, friend of mine, old time, breeder actually bought that animal and unfortunately never was able to breed it. Now back then most people thought that piebaldism like this wasn't a genetic mutation. Now years later going into the 90s actually another male was imported into the country and Brian bought that one to breed it as well. Then shortly thereafter a guy named Ernie Wagner that used to be the curator of reptiles at the Seattle Zoo actually bought another male that came into the country. Then a farm over in Accra, Ghana run by a guy named Emmanuel Noah actually got two female babies. They were ended up importing into the country and went to VPI, which is Vita Precocia International, Dave and Tracy Barker. And they ended up having those two baby females. Well, Pete Call, you may know the Call Albino Boas, Pete Call actually decided he was going to try to buy that project out from everyone he possibly could. So he bought the male from Brian Sharp, who had never bred it, and he bought the two female babies from VPI, which ultimately did still belong to Emmanuel Noah over in Africa. Now, at the same time, Ernie Wagner actually produced one clutch of heterozygous babies and then Pete bought that male. So then he had a monopoly. He had the only two males and he had the only two females in the country and he ended up producing a handful of clutches of heterozygous. Later that year I actually bought one of the males from Pete Call and then the next year the two females that Pete bought from Tracy and Dave actually were up to size and he bred piebald to piebald and sure enough when those eggs hatched there were piebald babies in it. Up until that time most people didn't think it was going to be genetic and it changed the entire ball python game because for the first time there was a ball python that was worth $25,000 and people started looking at ball pythons not only as beautiful animals and actually cool to keep but then they started looking at them in investments which was really interesting and something that was different in the ball python game. Right around that same time Bob Clark was doing it with albino ball pythons too and that's really what started the entire ball python craze but piebald ball python certainly started my love of breeding ball pythons and now you know the history behind them. Back at you guys with my favorite company around, of course, Raycon and the Everyday E25. You guys know that I love this brand. I've been wearing them every single day. It's just so comfortable, you know? They fit amazing. The sound of the quality is amazing. And this summer, I'm gonna be using them a ton because now that it's warm outside, I'm out there in the wilderness. And guess what? I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to my favorite music. And the fact that these guys have a six hour playtime charge with this cool little carrying case right here, it actually can charge up to four times. That's 24 hours. And trust me, I push the limits over 24 hours and they're absolutely amazing. It's a, just a cool company. And I love companies that actually over deliver. And with these guys, they over deliver. You will get these guys at a great price. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of other premium wireless earbud brands and sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. It was a company that was founded by Ray J. Snoop Dogg loves these things. Mike Tyson loves these things. They're absolutely incredible. And now there's a 45 day free return policy if you're not happy, but trust me, hundreds and hundreds of people have got these for me and every single person has loved them. There's no way you're gonna return. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. Everyday E25s are an absolute ripper and guess what, they're a great value. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your order. That's right, buyraycon.com slash Brian B. Save 15% off an already low price. Trust me, you guys will not regret it. You need these for this summer. Get rid of the wires, get rid of all that other stuff. Get yourself some everyday E25s. Don't bite me. It's gonna ruin your Supreme hat. He is actually gonna ruin your hat. But Don't he's... ruin my hat. Ay, 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 mamacita, so sharp. Ay, 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 ay. Whose idea was this? Ah. Hold that, okay. Ah. Okay, do it. Oh, oh, so sharp, so sharp. Oh. That one's inside of your skin right there. Oh, oh. So sharp. He's not a shoulder pad. He's not a shoulder pad. Okay, so we won't be having that experience at the Reptarium, oh. but come and yeah. visit Grits. That'd be great for kids. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so hold <on. laughs> Mike's, oh, Mike's it made hurts a, me more than it's hurting. Mike's made a steal. Oh, it's not bad, man. Turn around for us. Give us a little 360 action. <laughs> 
pretty awesome clutch that we have here. Look at mama's wrapped around a bunch of eggs. This is actually a Woma Lesser pinstripe and she was bred to this pastel crystal male, which is an absolute beauty. So let's go ahead and play a little game, guys, all right? Again, this is a pin Woma Lesser bred to a pastel crystal. What possibly could come from that breeding. So what I want you to do down in the comments is tell me what combinations you think I could get from a pastel crystal to a Woma Lesser pinstripe. We'll see how many eggs she has here. She looks like she's wrapped around a beautiful clutch egg. Come on, mama, let them go. Oh my goodness gracious, look at this girl right here. Absolutely beautiful clutch, beautiful animal. There's no doubt about that. So we'll go ahead and get these eggs off here and we'll put them in the egg box right here. We have two, four, six, seven good eggs. I'm curious to see, have you been following along? Have you been learning about genetics? Down in the comments, let me know what you guys think. And by the way, guys, like I had mentioned, we're trying to switch up our filming and try to make things a little less repetitive. So if you guys want to see egg collecting, we're gonna go ahead and post some stuff over on our Patreon. The link will be in the description. So we're just gonna really pull the clutches that we're excited about. We're excited about all of them. We're gonna just pull the coolest clutches. The other clutches will be over on Patreon, just so you guys don't get bored with us. Always great to see baby snakes. You guys know how exciting this is. A pastel yellow belly that's bred to a lemon blast extreme gene entry. So just some really cool combinations. Actually, this one right here is a kind of an interesting one. It's what they would call a super blast, which is a super pastel and a pinstripe. I don't think it's an extreme gene and I don't think it's an entry. So we kind of missed on that one, which is a little bit of a bummer. But this one right here is really a ripper. This is actually the lemon blast entry yellow belly extreme gene. Look at the striping on that animal and the cleanliness. Who doggy, I tell you what, that is an absolute ripper. And then I love this one right here too. This one is basically the same exact animal I just talked about, but minus the entry. And I kind of really like it. I mean, the way the Extreme Gene cleans it up, so it's a, a lemon blast, yellow belly, Extreme Gene. And that thing just is absolutely gorgeous. Then we have a little entry Extreme Gene here. Doesn't look like a yellow belly. And it looks like these two right here that are absolutely beautiful, again, are Enchi Extreme Gene Lemon Blast. So just like the daddy here. So a really nice, beautiful clutch of eggs. I can't believe how absolutely incredible they are. So uh, definitely awesome to see babies hatch. It's kind of cool now that we have these stands that we got for the sloth, we can actually bring other animals out that don't typically come out. Guacamole is actually a Mellor's chameleon and he's always back in his cage. He doesn't like to be handled, so we really don't handle him too much. But now we can actually bring him out and let him crawl around on this new kind of apparatus for him. Now the Mellor's chameleons, I think are some of the most spectacular chameleon and his color changing that comes from those guanine crystals can happen so quickly I mean he goes from like no black dots to all kinds of black dots within seconds it's pretty absolutely stunning now these are the second largest chameleon on the planet that's right only second to the Parsons chameleons on Madagascar but it is the largest chameleon species on the continent of Africa absolutely stunning I mean he's a big male right now so he's not gonna get much bigger than that but wow that is incredible in the wild they say they actually can eat little birds and stuff like that. Unbelievable. In captivity, we typically feed them roaches and crickets and superworms and hornworms and all kinds of things like that. So mainly we keep him on an insect diet, but I've had him for about three years now and he is amazing. The other good thing about the Mellors and the Parsons, the giant chameleons, is typically they live longer. You know, when it comes to like veil chameleons, maybe five years. Panther chameleons might do 10, 12 if you're really, really lucky. These guys can actually live up to 20 years. Now, the downside is that we got him as an adult, so I have no idea how old he is but he's three years with us, so I'm assuming he's at least eight or nine years old, but he still seems to be crushing it and doing well, so hopefully he'll be around for another 10 years. So my tour is in the house from Evansville, Indiana. We're gonna have a good time, you ready? Yes. Let's go. you guys enjoyed the vlog today i really do appreciate it over on this side you can watch a couple more videos in that playlist uh, over here hit that subscription button for me i really do appreciate you guys have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you tomorrow